Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Let's jump into it. So I'm hopeful that this process is gonna be helpful for you. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically work through this shot and refine tune it and sort of get it, get it done. But in the process, I'm just gonna do all the things I would normally do. And hopefully that that process of watching me do this work is gonna give you lots of tips, lots of cool ideas and lots of ways that you could be working in Blender in your own projects. So let's do it. All right, so I've got my collections turned off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the collections. I was hiding all my other characters so I didn't have them cluttering up the scene and I could just focus on my main uh, main droid. So you can see these guys are just sliding um, on the ground here. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this animation and I'm gonna harvest it and put it on all these guys and then add a little variation as well. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go over to the dope sheet and I'll select my main worker droid guy here, go into object mode. Um, and let's see, we've got an action on him. If I do my drop, try drop sheet, drop down, that's hard to say, we have the action editor. And I'm gonna go into the action editor and here's this action here. This is the animation data block that lives on this character. So that's where this walk is coming from. So you can see if I grab one of these other guys and swap it out, what was it? Uh, I might just call this, um, uh, let's see worker, tired worker droid. Okay, just so I can identify it. I'm gonna make sure I've got only shows selected turned off. So that means I'm seeing all the keyframes that live on this guy for this moment. And I just wanna grab this set because once we get to here, I've got some specific actions that I wanna keep for all these guys. So I'm going to start off by B to box select and I'm gonna grab all these keys right up to here. So you can see everything's selected by selecting the summary level copy this. I'm going to come over to my other droid and I will call this worker droid, uh, worker droid 02. So with this selected, I think what I need to do, I forget, I don't think I could just paste it. Let's like hit A to select all these channels, control V to paste, and that will paste it in. Yep, there it is. Now I need to move this back um, to right about there. And that was where it lined up. So now let's see. Yeah, these guys are now right on top of each other but I've got the worker droid anim action data block. Now what I can do is go into the graph editor and make sure I've got worker droid 02, go into pose mode, and I wanna select that root controller. And now what I can do is I can open this up. So I've got the master. I just wanna look at the X and Y and uh, actually have a Y position right here for him. So I can use this as sort of a reference point. So this is the position I want him to be at. So let's just look at the Y for a second. We could grab all these and hit G and Y and bring them up until this bit here is level, right? And then you'll see, there you go. Yeah, so he's in the right spot. Cool, all right, let's grab his X location and let's do the same thing. We'll grab all these that we just pasted in and we'll G and Y and we'll kind of bring him up so that he's in line. Now he's perfectly in sync, right? So. I want to select everything. I'll get out of the graph editor because I'm working in timing. So it's a good idea. Use the dope sheet when you're doing timing, graph editor when you're doing like specific um, motion stuff. Um, it's going to be a lot easier for you. And bear in mind too, we're still in just the action editor, but that's okay. I don't want to forget that. Um, so what I can do is grab all these and just offset them by bringing it back a couple of frames. That should be enough. I could slow him down some as well. Like I could hit S to scale. Just slow it down. Let's go back to the graph editor and just check the master controller. I wanna make sure I can see all these things. So I'm gonna go here to the armature tab on this guy and I'm gonna click in front under viewport display. The way I can always see the bones even when they're underneath the geo. I do feel like he's through the floor a little bit. So I need to come over here and grab all this. And is there any difference in these? Yeah, there is, look at that. So if I hold down control and middle mouse button, I can change my zoom level on the graph editor. And where we were, it looked flat, right? It looks flat, you think, oh, there's no difference. But if I keep zooming, you start to see that motion. And that can be a big deal, like this kind of difference. So I can bring this up to here. All right, let's copy this across to the other guys. 
full screening really helps like jumping out back and forth the control of the space bar is what i'm doing for that it's really useful we'll, we'll we'll leave it like that for now we'll do some more refinement as we go okay so let's do that hit i'm gonna hit alt p to clear my preview range start with this guy and grab this control control keys do we already have does a quick turn it's just a bit delayed i'm going to get out of the action editor go to the dope sheet and i'm going to turn on only shows selected because i just want to look at the look controller for a second because that's the bit of animation i'm interested in Let's bring all this back I also want to take this master controller. There's a lot of drift going on here. So what we can do with this though, is we can flatten it right here at this point. If I um, shift right click right on that key and then go up here to pivot point and set it to 2D cursor. And then I can grab these keys and scale Y zero, I'll flatten them right out on that and see how this looks right, let's put some love into the camera i'm going to select the camera i've got shift b is my hotkey setup for that but you can also come to select active camera you can right click you can change the shortcut or add a shortcut and that's what i did shift b so let's have a look at the curves on this camera specifically the rotation so right now it's pretty linear or like it pretty normal but the idea is if this was to happen the camera operator would probably react like with that like if you're if you're got the tripod right and you're waiting for it and as soon as the guy comes in then you quickly move and you're gonna have this like sharp kind of um you're gonna buff it into it so if i grab these there shouldn't be anything on the x there is okay it's a bit of rotation on all of them so I'm going to normalize this so I can see them all together. Normalize this change the animation. It just changes the way the graph editor presents the values. So it brings all the curves into relation to each other. Um, so what I'm going to try and do here is uh, I'm going to switch this to individual centers and I'm going to S X to scale this up on the X. And to judge this, it's going to be important that I've got good frames per second. So let's have a look. Yeah, we're only looking at 12 frames per second. So I'm going to switch this back to that mode. It gets me back up to 24. Cool. It's a lot better. I don't know if you can feel that difference, but. I might even want to like soften it a little bit. Take my camera and then K. Uh, let's see, I'll go location rotation and then I'll grab these guys. So what I did was I set a new key right here, which just kind of fits in with the shape of that curve naturally. But now I'll take this final one and just drag it out a little bit. And that just extends that motion ever so slightly. So you get this nice buffer. I need to fix up this guy's feet. So I'm just going to come over here as we start to have this drift and slide right here. So he plants his foot. I'm going to make this an actual plant. Go. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to shift D, bring it all the way over here. And then I'm going to make it maybe linear. Now I need to get rid of that slide. So I'm going to delete that key and I'm going to grab this. Just bring it out so his foot just stays still the whole time. And then this one, plant, and then he's going to 
vertebrae here. Uh, location rotation. Lift it up. Like that footfall is probably a little bit slow. And it's also too high. Like that, there we go. And then again, we just want to make sure just bring it across here just to make sure. You can see he's sinking a little bit, and that's coming from the master controller from the Z location. If we look at the Z, you can see it's drifting down the whole time, um, which we don't really want. Once he comes to a rest, we just want him to stay. So what I might do is bring this one up. Select these keys, right-click, handle type, auto clamped, and then as I bring it up, it's going to flatten. It'd be funny if their eyes kind of went big. What is the, where's the controller for that again? It's down in custom properties. Yep. So it's down here. It's these guys. All right. Awesome. Well, I'm going to call it there for today. Let's have a look. Nice. Comedy. So I hope you found that helpful and interesting, how I work through a shot and try and bring animation into it and refine it. And um, yeah, like I said, I hope you're learning a lot through this process. Let me know down in the comments below if you find it helpful and if you've got any questions. And again, you can check out uh, Dump Run on the Blender Market. We've got the entire, all the assets involved in this project. You can purchase there along with heading over to Patreon or joining on YouTube to get the full uncut version of this tutorial where I go into a lot of extra detail and there's all kinds of cool stuff there for you. So you can also get the project files for this uh, part of the film right here if you join up on Patreon this month or next month. They're available there. So thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Until then, have a fantastic week. See you later. Bye. Oh.